So good to be with you all. The title in your program says, When is Hospitality Important? But I typed it out, and sometimes I wonder if the Spirit is nudging you in a little different way when hospitality is important. It makes a little bit of difference when you move the is behind hospitality as opposed to in front of hospitality. And so we find ourselves here today. Sometimes when we do the same thing over and over again, it can become mundane, and we just go through it with not a lot of oomph. So I want to pause a minute and just for each of us to think and reflect on why we are here. The power and importance of this faith community gathering together. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I don't know what people had to do to get online today, nor do I know what they had to do to get here. As I sat here today this morning talking with Peter We talked about distractions, how we found ourselves sitting in the chair. And so, Lord, as we are gathered here today, some of us coming in many different ways, some of us still may may be carrying the burden of what was on our mind before we got here. Help us, Lord, to arrive. Help us to arrive to this community. Help us to arrive to this space. Help us to hear and feel the spirit of the music and the message. In Jesus' name, amen. When hospitality is important. It was Nora Wood's birthday when she was in the grocery store with her mom doing groceries. She had a front row seat in the grocery cart. When she saw this old man, she greeted him and said, Hi, old man. It's my birthday today. She didn't know it then, but Mr. Dan Peterson had lost his spouse six months earlier, and he was sinking into a deep depression. He stopped and he looked at her. Before the mom could correct her daughter for calling the man old, He responded, well, hello, little lady. And how old are you today? They began a conversation right in the grocery store. The old man kept staring at the little girl as if he was coming out of a coma. And they kept on talking. And she kept her hand in his hand. And then she kissed the top of his forehead, and she asked him for a hug. And Mr. Dan just beamed. This encounter of two strangers in the grocery store became the start of a lovely relationship, and these two would meet once a week. Mr. Dan reported to her mom he hadn't been able to sleep, but ever since he had met Nora, He slept soundly at night. One day on one of their weekly meetings, Nora started crying, and Mr. Dan asked, what's wrong, Nora? And she responded, nothing, nothing's wrong. I just love you so much. And she hugged him some more. Mr. Dan told the girl, every time I see you, I get happy. I love you too. This morning, we're talking about hospitality. Hospitality is the gentle offering of kindness. And you can offer it anywhere, anytime, to anyone. You can speak to someone. You can hold the door open for someone. You can offer someone help when you see them struggling. You can share a meal. You can listen to someone. You can support someone that's going through something. You can have an open mind to someone. You can accept, as we heard in this song this morning, accept others. You can welcome someone into your home. Hospitality is not about what's in your pocket. It's about what's in your heart. But more than anything, we do hospitality as being rooted in this attitude 
of genuine care, kindness, and generosity towards others like Nora. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Abraham sees three strangers. These are three people that he has never met before. Without wasting time, he jumps up and he rushes toward them. He greets them in a bow-down gesture. He had water brought out so that they could wash their feet. In other countries where water is not plentiful, it is a custom for people's feet to be washed. He invited them to rest from their journey under the tree. He then has another servant to bring out bread. He then asks Sarah to make some cakes. He runs to his herd and takes a calf to be prepared for his guests. A whole calf is killed for three men. And we know this took a lot of time, but the next passage tell us that they ate the offering. One way that we show up for hospitality is through food. When I was younger, the pastor would visit my grandmother almost every Sunday. And every Sunday, late in the afternoon, she would prepare his coffee black. And she would have something on the stove to share with him and his family. And this was almost every Sunday we'd hear the car roll around. He was her last stop on his rounds after church on Sunday. That was how it worked at the little country church in King William, Virginia. I saw no matter who visited or when they came, that my grandmother always had something prepared. She always had something to serve. There was always this hospitality shown. And if we knew you were coming, it was even sweeter and better. On TikTok, there's this video of a Tanzanian woman called Phyllis. It's not her real name, but that's what we've started to call her on TikTok. And she moved to China, fell in love with a man, and had two kids. But it's been six years since she's gone back to Tanzania, and she wanted to go home. Her story has picked up volume, and now there's a journalist that's following her. So finally, she had gotten up the money, raised the money to be able to go back to Tanzania. It took them three days and three nights, this pilgrimage, to get back home to her community in Tanzania. But when she gets there, they begin to prepare this meal. Oh my gosh, all this food is brought out in these little pots and put on these tables. There were dishes upon dishes that come out. Phyllis has come home, and we must welcome her home. Hospitality welcomes others, and it makes them feel special. Hospitality first begins with seeing others, maybe even seeing the divine. Nora saw something in Mr. Dan. Abraham saw something in the strangers. Being able to see that someone is in need is the door to hospitality, while hospitality is the door to relationships. Seeing someone, especially someone that is very different from us. Over in Warren, Michigan, the bus driver had driven the same route with kids for years, but on this day, he was feeling lightheaded. Before he could do anything about his condition, he lost consciousness. One kid saw what was happening and in quick action jumped up. He ran up to the driver, grabbed the wheel, and pushed the brakes down. While this story happened years ago, it's making another circulation on social media. But one journalist asked an interesting question about the whole incident. With all of these kids on the bus and the bus losing control, why was it that only one kid on the whole bus acted. And what they learned was that every other kid on the bus had an electronic device. He was the only kid on that bus that didn't have a cell phone. Without a phone, he was aware and alert and able to see what was going on around him. Hospitality is not just a response to seeing what is going on around us, 
Abraham was able to feel that these strangers were different. And he responded. He recognized that they were different. He felt a divine presence. And Abraham pours out generously to these three strangers. I mean, check this out. He had them rest under shade. He asked the strangers to stay. He has their feet washed and provides them with refreshment. This foot washing act was a sign of genuine care and humility. He had his servants and Sarah prepare a meal from scratch. This wasn't no jiffy or you know what I'm saying. This was no drive-by fast food restaurant, but they killed a calf and then they cooked it and that must have taken some time. They spared no effort to ensure their visitors were comfortable and well-fed. Hospitality extends beyond an invitation to encompass a selfless act of giving without expecting anything in return. Abraham goes above and beyond. He goes the extra mile to create an environment of comfort, nourishment, and care. Danny Meyer says that hospitality is love on the loose. Well, Mr. Dan and Nora would go on to have love on the loose for four years. Nora wouldn't let go of Mr. Dan, and he was loving it all. And though she was only four when they met, I believe that she saw something in him. Their worlds were far apart, but in a grocery store of all places, he was sinking and she was happy. And she reached out and she shared just a little of her joy with him, passing him in the store. And it touched him, it touched him a whole lot. He had family, but the act of this stranger shook him. And when, and when, her graduation from kindergarten rolled around. There were loads of kids there, and there were loads of parents. And there was Mr. Dan sitting right there in the audience, there to see it all with so much pride on his face. They met all the time, and especially for holidays, Miss Dan touched many lives through Nora. Her little sister even got in on the action, and so did her mom, and so did her family. And so did so many others that they set up this page on Facebook. For his last Christmas, he got over 200 Christmas cards. Mr. Dan, you've impacted my life. Many news outlets have shared this story, and it's simply this. A total stranger reaching out to another total stranger. This passage today of the three strangers visiting Abraham and Sarah is a story that reminds us of the transformative power of hospitality and the blessings that flow from practicing it. When hospitality is important, things happen. Amen. <laughs>